Hi guys and welcome back, I am finally here able to present you Ragnarok Online 2, RO2 for short. And I'm sorry that it took a while for me to get this video up um, because I wanted to just play the game as much as I could and get a lot of information from it in order to do this review. And that the fact that the servers weren't that stable during the first few days of its launch. And I it would be terrible if I was to record it or if I was doing something and it broke during that time. So right now the servers are quite stable and that is why I finally am doing this video. So the video will be actually very long because there's a lot to RO2 and I will probably be breaking this up into parts and then uh, probably two parts. Part one being all the the features and just the game uh, mechanics of the uh, RO2 and then um, the next video would just be hints and tips. So in this video I want to do all the mechanics and then within this video I'll break it into parts and so on. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> so we're gonna start with character creation and I'm not really sure how many characters you can make since it's still allowing me to create my sixth character and maybe that's probably the max. Um, don't quote me on that. So on the left here you can either choose a male or a female now, uh, it doesn't matter what gender you pick um, for each character you make. Whereas in RO1, you were kind of restricted to either choosing all female, all male. Next, we have our classes, and we are missing our merchant class from RO1, but that's because uh, all these classes can vend now in this game, and we are just kind of missing the overcharge and discount, which is mostly why all of us made merchant classes at least. So starting off, we have our swordsmen, which can either change into knights or warriors. I'm going to guess either tank versus um, attack. Magicians, either sorcerer or wizard. Our sorcerer is mainly a lot of support. Um, it does have some of the uh, wizard's skill from R01, which is kind of weird. And then with our wizards, we have like whole new skills almost, and then a few coming back from R01. Archers, we either have Rangers or Beastmasters. Uh, Beastmasters is quite new to RO, and that class allows you to change you to like a bear, tigers. I don't think it changes you into an eagle, but those two. And it's, I gotta say, I've heard some good things about it from, a, from my cousin, and he likes it a lot. So that's the next class I'm going to be working on. We have our Thief, which is Assassin and Rogue. And they're pretty much the same as R01, um, except that the Assassin class actually can change into a Shadow Fiend mode, which is a really, to me, really scary, like, I don't know, form for them. And then we have the Acolyte, which is our Priest and Monk. And that is just the same thing like R01. Um, so yeah. Over here we have our Jobs. Now this is only for crafting purposes. So for our chef, we can create foods that will heal our HP and SP over time while we're out of battle and affect our stats. Alchemist, the same thing. We have pots that we can use within bat the battling, within battling? Uh, during battling. And then pots to increase our stats, like just buffs too. Blacksmith can produce all the weapons for each class and heavy armor for the swordsman. Um, so if you are a swordsman, you might want to nudge over to blacksmith, but um, you don't have to. I'm not saying that it's a good way to go, but uh, it just seems more beneficial if you can see where that's coming from. And then artisans uh, makes clothes for every other class, magicians, archer, thief, and acolyte. And then they make uh, accessories, so either necklaces or earrings or whatever other things that they've put in the game. And then down here you can change your appearances. There's not that many, so there's 15 hairstyles. And then you can change the hair color, your face style, if I can click on it, there we go. Your eye color and your eye style. So there's actually a good amount of customization compared to RO1, but not anything that crazy either. You actually have voice acting in this. Um, they you, they had it for like Korean voice acting, I'm gonna guess, but they switched it to um, American voice acting when our server opened. 
and then you make your name here you have to check it just in case somebody has it and then you're ready to go to play the game okay so with the map system it's pretty straightforward you are currently on Islud Hill which I will go back to Islud Hill and that will show over here here we have like the zones and if you click on this you can see where we are we're kind of like around here and this is like the Pontera zone and then the Payon zone and then Alberta and then Morocco. So we have zones here and in, within the zones we have the fields which we are usually accustomed to in RO1. So we have our self plane which is kind of, um, I want to say the south of Pontera but when you're in Pontera it's not really south of Pontera, it's kind of like west of Pontera. And then you have Pontera itself and so on. So the the fields itself isn't very similar to RO1, but uh, you get the general feel like, oh yes, you're in South Pontera and whatever. So if you're just kind of playing around and you kind of want to go back to your map, let's see if I just go like this and mess around with it, and you want to go back to the map that you are currently on, you can easily click on the Islud Hill or whatever is shown up here and you will automatically be shown your map. So on this map, you'll see all the NPCs and exclamation marks where it shows you what quests there uh, you, that you have a quest there, and then other stuff. Um, the Capra Flying Zone I will show you when I get back into town. And with the map, actually, you can press M again, and you can be shown a clear see-through of it. You can press Control in order to move it to a different side, right here or anywhere. And it also works with the quest system. Now, you can click on the quest and it will show you where you have to go and then where you have to turn it in with the blue blinking light. If you click here, it shows you where you need to go with the red mark. Um, if you are needing to kill a monster, it should show you like the different areas to kill the monsters. And it's pretty straightforward. So yeah. So movement in this game is pretty simple. You can either move to click or click to move, and then you can use your WASD to move around. Now, originally for default, you would have your moving using your right click mouse button, but I didn't really like that. And so I went to game settings and controls and inverted my mouse. So actually everything you do will be with whatever, um, mouse button th that you will pick. So if you want to attack, talk to NPCs, move around, that will all be on your one mouse button that you happen to choose. And then move by click on land is as again, moving by clicking. And you can untoggle that if you want. For the camera angle, it is pretty weird, especially when you start going into buildings because uh, the camera angle doesn't adjust itself. So. Uh, when you're moving, actually, if you like to move at different camera angles or look at different angles and have it stay there, you would want to put the option as lock camera. By default, it's not on there, uh, not checked. On default, it is toggle while moving. And this, I will show you when you are moving and you happen to kind of look around, it will automatically go uh, back to its original state, which I didn't really like that much. So I have it on lock camera. Control options for the character view and control center of the camera. I'm not really sure. I've played around with it and I can't figure out what's the difference. If somebody who's watching this knows and would like to inform us, then that would be awesome. And yeah, that's basically all the movement in this game. So for the UI, it's pretty simple. Uh, just a couple of things here and there that needs to be explained. So on the top, basically, this is the class that you are your level, your HP, your SP. This is something called the Guardian Summon Mode. And this basically, when it's all filled up, you don't have to do anything uh, for it to fill up. It just fills, fills up over time. And what it does is if you click on your scissors or in maybe a blacksmith case, an anvil or whatever, or if you press V, it will summon like an orb. And for 30 seconds, that orbs will give you a special... Mm, buff i guess if you want to say so for mines if i click on it i'll get a, a buff on haste vigor and movement speed when that fills up i'll show it to you 
So what else? Then you have your map. You can zoom in out. Uh, you can reset your dungeons here. This one is your threat meter. This is actually pretty handy during uh, dungeons instances. You can change your channel here, and then the map, and then what you where you are. The quest tracker you can bring it up down, and then the Kaffir tracker, which I will have to explain later. So the UI down here, your chat. Um, you can change the settings on, like, not the setting, but what you want displayed on different tabs by uh, left clicking and then picking whatever you like, naming it differently. Here you have your menus for all the different features that are in this uh, game. And I will go through them one by one later on. So actually down here you can see that only five are allowed to be shown. And then the rest you would have to click on the menu um, button to show it the rest and then you can left click it to, or right click it sorry to kind of show what it is or what it does so if you want one of these actually to be on the bottom you can see these check marks these check boxes and you can uncheck them or check them to show it and then you can move it to different areas different slots like that pretty in, pretty easy we have our exp bars and this one is for your class exp so your assassin your mage or whatever and then your job exp bar for artisan blacksmith chefs and alchemists now how you get these are different and i'll explain that in the battle um, system in the middle we have our hotkeys and you can change your hotkeys by going to the hotkey settings and then pressing custom options and there you can set whatever you like and then you have your bags and your zenny. Now the gold actually is not called gold, it's zenny. Um, the silver is actually called rupees. I don't, I don't know why that happened. Um, a little bit more on the bags actually. You'll get a basic bag to start off with. And then the three other bags you will get uh, while fighting monsters. Or you can purchase them for like 500 rupees. Which isn't that bad actually. So with the bags actu uh, actually... I'm actually saying a lot, actually a lot. <laughs> Anyways, um, with the bags, you'll, it'll up, not upgrade, but you'll get the upgrades, um, fighting the monsters on your way up. And uh, here you can see I killed something and I got a medium bag. I think the one below this is like a small bag, and it only has like two rows of I don't know how many. Um, columns but basically if you had a small bag here and this will be probably let's say yeah bag one so if you had this bag this medium bag in your small bag and you would like to upgrade it to the medium bag you would actually have to take this medium bag out and move it to another bag and then be able to equip it there by either right cl or right clicking or dragging it down because if you have your small bag and your small bag has this medium bag it will not let you change it out um, if that is kind of uh, confusing to you uh, just try it out you'll you'll get what I mean and if you still have problems with it uh, feel free to contact me and I will try to explain it more in detail so for the battle system um, it's quite ugly in this game and I thought they changed it after um, kind of closed beta but they haven't so with short range attacks so melees um, are no, not archer what am I saying like swordsman and thief you when you target uh, a monster and you click on one of your spells it would automatically kind of run you up there and then um, just hit it right or if you're like not facing it, say you're going like this and you want to hit this monster, it will automatically turn you around and hit it. Which is really nice. It's, I mean, that's what it's supposed to do, right? But as long range uh, characters like my mage, um, acolytes, um, and what was the other one? And archers, you have to be facing, literally your character has to be facing the monster. So here, um, this red, the red name for the monster is mean that it's aggro. 
So if you walk past it, it will kind of attack you. So here you can see I'm hitting it perfectly fine like this. Now you can press R to uh, auto loot it if there's anything to auto loot. If not, it will just kind of stand there. The reason that this is shining is because of my job and I will have to explain that a little bit later. But if I were to kind of have my back turned to a monster like this and I try to target as you can see it says target must be in the front and for us that's quite bad not really bad but quite annoying because um, that means like we have to prepare ourselves to like get in position for us to um, fight the monster rather than having it just auto turn for us so if you press R and, or you can click on it you can see what you can pick up and if you actually press R again it will just automatically pick it up for you and that is basically the battle system. It's pretty horrendous um, just for that reason. And uh, yeah. So I'm going to do a little explanation on your job now. So job meaning artisans, blacksmith, uh, alchemists, and chefs. Now how we level our EXP for jobs is for crafting. And here you can see we can craft a whole bunch of things um, depending on what uh, job you picked. And here you can see the level. Now if you have the items to make it, it will show in yellow as you can see here. And then it will show you how much EXP you'll get and how many you can make. You can either create one by clicking this or create all by just crafting it all. Now depending on how many you can actually make, it actually could take a long time to craft. But since this is only four, it's actually quite quick. And as you can see, you change into uh, your job um, kind of clothing. Mine's already automatically there and I'll show you why. But as you can see, there you go. If you move, you will get out of it and you won't be able to create anything. So how you get these items are um, by killing, oh, in my case, artisans, in my case, you kill monsters and collect material from them. Now, if you're a chef, you might do the same thing or you'll collect stuff around on the ground. If you're an alchemist, you'll be collecting, um, there you go, uh, you'll be collecting flowers for your material. And then for blacksmith, you will be collecting rocks around the map also so actually be aware of your surroundings and you'll know when you can collect because of this kind of sparkling effect that they have like this so if you're an artisan anybody after like this you get your item your material and it will still kind of be shining that means I can click on this and I'll get a little bit of exp from that and depending on what job you are you'll get exp for your collecting also so right now i'm in town and um in any map you'll have a town almost or at, at least a place where you can have your artisan expert or um your cooking expert or whatever expert right it's your whatever job expert and here your expert will sell you um, a couple items that you will need in order to craft what you want. It also is a place where you learn your different crafts. Now the ones that are yellow is the ones that you can learn from. So here I can start making headgears for monks and priests and whatnot. And you can scroll down and they all do cost a, a hefty fine once you get into the higher levels. Obviously the ones that are not highlighted are because of the level of requirement for you to make them. So you need to be level, um, if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't show, actually. Yeah, it doesn't show. But I am at level 30 and I can only craft level 26, so these are probably at level 40-ish something maybe, that we'll be, uh, I'll be able to get them. So yeah, you can, they're in every map, uh, you just have to keep a lookout for them on your map and then kind of see where they are, like that. Mm. 